going to look at, uh, so we're not looking, we're going to read some Emerson today. Uh, I don't think it was this hour, maybe it was next hour, but we had some interesting discussion yesterday while we were reading. Some people wondering what kind of human Emerson is. Is he a nice guy or is he really cocky because he's so smart? I mean, he is known as the father of American literature, and he does have a lot of quotes that are really amazing quotes and whatever. Um, but is part of the, when we finish this whole unit, a couple weeks, we'll move on to a novel. But the closing situation with this whole unit will be um, an assignment that gives you a ton of choice. First time I ever did it was last year. There's a bunch of stuff I want to add to it, take away from it. I think I'm going to add to it. One of them will be to really find out who Emerson is and then to teach me. Um, because he was a well-respected lecturer. But some people, in the next hour they are after thought, he kind of comes off as kind of cocky and all-knowing or whatever. But I don't know if he was a good dude or not. I know it was rich because he went out and did a lot of uh, lecturing. But anyway, so you're going to have a lot of choice uh, with what to do with this whole unit, including, I feel like, I might also throw a little mini test out there about transcendentalism and romanticism, but you'll be fine. All right. Um, I went through this. So I just want to go back over this, and I want to uh, make sure the eight key things about transcendentalism are in your brain. That's the main thing. I hope that next year, if you, you know, are walking by, that A, you'll say, hey, and B, I was like, hey, you're like, what are you doing now in English 10? And I'll be like, oh, we're doing Emerson. You'll be like, oh, simplify. Or that you'll at least have in your brain some stuff that we talked about. So um, I don't know, have we talked about Poe at all this hour? Not really. Have you read some Poe? He's a dark romantic. He's in this time period that we're studying right now. You've read some Poe, probably. The Heart Beating Under the Floorboards, Telltale Heart. Yes. yes, some people remember that. Get the pendulum, the pendulum's swinging, it's, a, it's like a blade, and, and it's on a guy's, he's laying there, and you've read that one. The Raven, wrong poem, about a black bird. You've seen the Simpsons episode about it, probably? Maybe, maybe not. Great Simpsons, great teaching tool. Um, but anyway, these are the um, romantics and transcendentalists down at the bottom. We'll read some of all of these people, except... I don't think we'll do any Melville, but everyone else we will read some throughout the year. Um, transcendentalism, um, we talked a little bit about the, you know, deep thinkers considering life, nature, religion, purpose, and the self. We talked a bit about that. There's Ralph, known as the father of American literature. We're going to read something by him right now. Creator of transcendentalism, mentor in Henry David Thoreau. So if you think about these two guys that I, I've said be, before are my guys, like there's Emerson, there's Thoreau. Emerson's really the guy. Okay, and he mentored Thoreau. In fact, when Thoreau went and sat in the woods for two years, two months, two days, it was on Emerson's land. So Emerson's like the guy. Henry David Thoreau like followed him. And a lot of future writers are like, yeah, Emerson was the guy that really set me up. Uh, we'll learn about Thoreau later. All right, eight transcendentalist principles. I just cruised through these one day, did I not? I did. Remember any? Let's flip our sheet over and let's write them on the back. Uh, who, who has one from their brain? Do you remember? And it would be amazing. I mean, I flew. Think for a minute. One of them should be obvious, though. Um, sorry, up there, Brady. I didn't give you one. Nature. Number one from Squid. Nature. Yeah, that's one of them, right? And we should know that because we went to the trees um, yesterday or the day or whatever. Yeah. Anyone remember any others? Uh, I heard it from the distance. What? Yeah, sorry. Meaning of life. Look for, that's unbelievable that you pulled that from your brain somewhere. Look for the meaning of life. Take time to like really analyze life and what are we really here for? Which I've told you before, I'm like I'm there right now. Like I'm really, like as, as I, more than I ever have been, I think in the last 20 years, I'm like there right now trying to find it and really think about it. And uh, I mean, I think you are my meaning of life, I think. But then I wonder about, Honestly, I've never said this. Honestly, I wonder about what you'll ever remember from me, like when you're 30, because I remember very little of my high school English classes. Like, very, you'll remember this, um, but will you ever remember anything else? And then I, so then I'm wondering, like, shoot, if you won't remember it, what am I doing? Like, I'm in that mode of right now of like, but anyway, that was more sharing than I needed to share. What else is on the list of eight? What do you got, man? Say it one more time. Yeah, being true to yourself, or and I think how he writes it, I, or how I wrote it when I made this presentation, was self-reliance. Oh, you can't see that thing right now. Um, self, I just wrote down self-reliance. One, I wrote down nature. Two, I wrote down meaning of life. Three, I wrote down self-reliance. Any others? We'll skim through them right now if you can't think of any others. <clears throat> you got another one? Did you write them down, Zary? Are these from you? Did hit me. Uh, grow. Grow. Yeah, like like really take time. Um, take time to grow. 
I like that. Am I? Did you write them down too? Yeah. I appreciate you. Working okay. hard. What else? Working hard. Uh, yeah, and it's it's not just um, mentally working hard. It's physical and mental work. I am in a stage right now in my life where I've been doing more physical activity than I've done probably in 10 years. I actually played five on five basketball for the first time in 10 years last Thursday night. And I used to play constantly. And I've been playing a lot of pickleball, I've been doing a lot of workouts with basketball players. And I think it helps. Like I think it helps me being physically active. I, I just think it does. Um, all right, so we got nature. Let's see what else we're missing here. Um, search for meaning, we got that. Physical mental work, and mind just helps us with that one. Oh, simplify. <clears throat> In fact, we know that one of the quotes from Thoreau, because I want to say I showed it to you on that artwork over there, is simplify, simplify, simplify. And oh my gosh, it's so hard. It's just so hard. We have a million things going on, but it's just so hard. Um, and we're all so busy. I think about that sometimes. Like we're all so busy, we all have our own stuff that is driving us to busyness. And you think about like a college student from last year, if I were to um, uh, ask Skylar right now, or if I were to text, text a college student last year, Abby Wright right now, my editor in chief last year, I bet you if I texted her, oh, we're using my phone over there, and said, what's up, how are you? You know I bet she'd send back. Oh, I bet she'd say I'm so busy. Like I'm so busy. And her busy is gotta go to class at Syracuse, and gotta do this, and gotta do that. Our busy is our stuff, you know, we're just so busy. And he wants us to simplify. Uh, time and personal growth, we got that one, right? Time to grow. Oh yeah, less government. This one seems to almost not fit. I will tell you that transcendentalists um, really didn't agree with a lot, and they actually rallied against the government quite a bit. And I wanna say Thoreau was in jail for a while because of things he said about the government, and he was really wishing the government, there was less government. And then live for the day, uh, live for today, number eight. Um, uh, what's the Latin term? Carpe diem, right? Uh, great um, major line from a movie called Dead Poets Society, used to show it. They mentioned all of our poets, it's, it's the Dead Poets Society, Robin Williams stars in it. Very sad about Robin Williams. Uh, and uh, I don't show it anymore because it's, it's so sad. And it could get me fired maybe, just because of what it's about in some ways, not really. But um, I kind of want to show it at the end of the unit. Coco, did I show you guys Dead Poets Society two years ago? Do you remember? That's right. Yeah. Coco, Coco struggled with it. All right, um, so then that means we're going to watch it. Yeah, so I, I could maybe do it with parent permission slips, but it's, it's, it's heavy. Right, yeah, and Coco got very sad, and other people did too. It shouldn't show it. Yeah, really, really sad. But, um, but anyway, and then number eight um, is be yourself, which I feel like we have when I, number three, I wrote down self-reliance. So those are the principles. Um, and I'm going to put at the top principles of transcendentalism. Uh, quick learning moment. How do you spell principles in that moment? P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E-S. L-E-S, principles. Okay, the other principle, you guys memorize it this way maybe, he's your prince of pal. He's your prince of pal, P-A-L. Okay, Mr. Pastinaw is your prince of pal. That's the person. Principle, these ideas, is L-E-S. All right, so uh, yeah, let's read some and, and, um, and talk about what this guy thinks. And I'm interested in what you think about this guy. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Uh, this was in 1836. Okay, 1836 that this was published. Wow, that's a long time ago, but really not, but kind of it is. 1836. Uh, and while you don't understand, this is an excerpt. You know that word means what? Like part of it. It's part of an essay called Nature, okay? By, by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Here we go. To go into solitude. A man needs to retire as much from his chamber as from society. I am not solitary while I read and write, though nobody is with me. Okay, so uh, problem with doing it together is you're gonna highlight what I highlight. I guess that's okay. I'd love to hear if there's some other sentence that hits you and you're like, wait, that one, Mr. George, I wanna talk about that one. Uh, but this one, you might think, you know, Emerson's out in nature, smoking nature. Um, I'm not solitary while I read and write, though nobody's with me. Uh, Ralph? You okay? Uh, someone talk to me. 
What do you think? What do you think he might mean? Who's with him? What do, what do transcendentalists believe that you can find in nature? Yeah, Nat. Like, just thoughts and, like, his feelings and future are with him. Okay. His ideas, his future, like you, when you went out and sat under the tree, that was in you, wasn't it? Your ideas and your future and thoughts about life. Mm -hmm. Love that. Who else might be with him? Maybe I did a poor job of really saying this. Do you have a guess? You look like you want to talk. Okay, he is with himself. Um, agreed. Uh, is that what you mean? Or do you mean his, like, uh, are you thinking? Okay, so his, like, uh, like, his, like, self, his soul or whatever. Bill? Oh, maybe, like, animals. Oh, okay, yeah. So he's, uh, yeah, thank you. I like that. Um, squirrels are with him. Groundhogs are with him. Grasshoppers are with him. Praying mantises is. Praying mantai. Plural for praying mantis, anybody? Don't know? That brings an interesting point. We can find out right now. Someone Google that. Matt, you have your laptop open. Don't know why, but do I think it's mantai. I wonder. Here's a weird thing about my life. You ready? Back in the day, because I'm old, when I was in high school, or even a little bit after high school, you know how things come up and you're like, oh, what is up? Da -da 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 -da, and the answer's there. You do that a lot in life? I do. My wife and I do that. Like, who sang that song? Hey, Siri, who sang that? Back in the day, when that stuff came up in my life, no answer. Could never, like, you'd have to go to a library and look it up. Like, there was no internet. There was no Google. There was no, like, look it up. Imagine that. Like, hey, who, why, you know, where was Emerson born? We'd be like, don't know. Right now, it's like, Emerson's were really weird. I don't know why I just said that. Nat, praying mantai? Praying mantis is, is, is. Okay, Nat's going to find it. All right. Um, I also believe, okay, transcendentalists, here's a statement I'm going to get you. Transcendentalists believe that you could find God in nature. That that's where true, like, faith was. Okay, and they went away from regular religion and were like, we can go sit in nature. That's where you can find God. Uh, why did I put God in quotes there? I don't know. But he is in quotes. The big fella. Great. Like, you know, push we're talking about, like, the enlightenment instead of... Oh, like, teach me. I don't, yeah, okay. Like, the enlightenment and great versus, like, the great awakening. Okay. Like, the great awakening is, like... Your stuff should be based on like religion and like God versus like enlightenment is like rational like thinking and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like much like the Great Awakening, like the, like move towards more towards this, you think? Yeah, like center yourself <clears throat> on like God. Yeah, that's good. We will read some stuff from those time periods. Lament and I talked. Yeah, Lament. Yeah. yeah, we talked about maybe for a couple weeks, one school year, like merging and just like teaching English and whatever. And he actually talked about next year offering a block class, honors 10, eight plus four, two hours of like both. Yeah, yeah, the regular block, yo. I, I wouldn't mind doing it, but I just don't know if I could all day look at his hair. Because I would just feel my self-concept would go just like so low all day. Look, and his outfits. I feel like I, He's so driven. I, that's what I mean. I don't know what that means at all. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he's super swag. Super swag. <laughs> Was that good? No, darn it! I thought I nailed it. All right. Anyway, um, so he's looking for God. He's out there with all of these people. All right. But if a man would be alone, let him look at the stars. You can talk about the stars for a while. The rays. Oh, sorry. Praying mantises is. Yes. Is it? Yes. Praying mantises. Wow. That's hard to say. All right. The rays that come from those heavenly worlds will separate between him and vulgar things. I want you to think, when, anytime we read anything together in class or alone, not just the stuff, but the writing style. Okay, and Emerson does some funky things here. We'll separate between him and vulgar things. Meaning if you sit in nature and look at the stars, it will separate you from all the, the crazy bad stuff in the world. One might think that the atmosphere is made transparent with this design to give man and the heavenly bodies the perpetual presence of the sublime. Um, you know, when I grade your article a month, I'm going to talk about using some literary devices and also some word choice, but what do we have right here with perpetual presence? Alliteration. Alliteration. Okay, so even then, Ralph was like, I'm going to sneak in some alliteration. <laughs> Seen in the streets of cities how great the stars are. If the stars should appear one night in a thousand years, how would men believe and adore? If the stars should appear one night in a thousand years, how would people believe and adore and preserve for many generations? 
the remembrance of the city of God which had been shown. But every night come out these envoys of beauty and light the universe with their admonishing smile. There's a lesson here. Gosh, the other day when we got to Elk Rapids, we were on our weekend trip, we got to Elk Rapids. Um, we took a long way there because we wanted to hit every casino we could and walk through woods and through nature and whatever, whatever. Finally got to Elk Rapids, the cottage we were renting at 10.30 p.m. Meg had been sleeping in the car, we were tired. But we got up, we couldn't find the keys to open the slide or whatever. And we both looked up for a second, I don't know why, and the stars in Elk Rapids that night, oh my God. Like crazy, because you know in Grand Rapids we don't get to see them quite as well because of light pollution or whatever. Have you had a moment where you were somewhere else? A lot of nodding right now, wow. Uh, Sam, where were you, just up north somewhere, or just somewhere else or whatever? Uh, in the UP. In the, oh my God. And you look up and you're like, holy yeah, pretty cool. right? But we don't do that here because of light pollution and whatever. We just, it's just not the same. Sometimes it takes you getting up to like nature to really think about it, right? Yeah, Ava. Um, I was uh, in the UP also, but I was in a completely dark. I was in the middle of the forest. Uh, and we turned off our flashlights and we were in like a field of sorts. Yeah. And we just started. And unbelievable. Unbelievable. Un like truly unbelievable, right? But we don't do it, we don't stop and look at it because of our busy lives, where we are, who we are, Grand Rapids, like all of that, right? But when you do, it's like, holy crap, right? Sid, mm. where? I went out in my backyard. Okay. Because I was in the middle of the woods. Okay. And I was letting my dog out and I just laid on the ground. <laughs> and that's amazing, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, I thought in Elk Rapids for that moment, we were too tired, we walked in, I didn't stop. But I just thought it was just different. Like Sam just said, you can just different. Like it just looks different. Where was the key? What's that? Where was, Where was the key? It was in the garage. I didn't think I had the key code, but I figured it out. Anyway, what's this lesson? Anyone, what's the lesson about you and maybe your friends and you got it already? What's the lesson? I was just gonna say, don't take the important stuff for granted. Yeah. You, right? That's what he's saying. Don't take, I'm gonna say things, but I'm also going to say people for granted. But because those stars are up there every night, we just don't do it. We just don't go out and look, unless we're somewhere special and really having a moment. But we don't, right? I would say with people, sometimes it takes a horrible tragedy for us to step back and pause for a minute and be like, wow, like I need to hug my family more. I need to take more time with a friend. I need to be different right now. And, and it's a bummer. It takes something really sad sometimes to happen. And for a couple weeks, we're like, mm, I'm going to. I'm gonna not take that person for granted or this stuff, like, but then it fades away again, doesn't it? Like, like time and it fades away and we get back to kind of how we are. And he's saying, you just can't take things for granted. You just can't, but again, it's so hard. The stars awaken a certain reverence. There's a lot of good word choice in here, by the way, because they're always present, they're always inaccessible. I like that part. When I read it second hour, I hadn't really thought about that part in other years when I taught this. Like something about the fact that we can always see them, but we can't get to them make them like, like we kind of like honor them in a way. But in some ways we don't, because we don't take the time. But something about them being inaccessible is interesting to me. But all natural objects make a kindred impression when the mind is open to their influence. I'm circling cool words. Nature never wears a mean appearance. Neither does the wisest man extort all her secrets and lose his curiosity by finding out all her perfection. Nature never became a toy to a wise spirit. The flowers, all the parts of nature, the animals, the mountains, reflected all the wisdom of his best hour as much as they delighted the simplicity of his childhood. You know, I haven't thought about this as much until I just read it. Oh, vague memories of the simplicity of my simple childhood. Like, like we had a baseball park across the street, and I was 10 years old or whatever, and after school was, we'd go out and we'd play, and then it would get dark, and I'd go home, and there'd be food, and I'd eat, and I'd watch a cartoon. Like, like, I just have memories. Do you have, like, did you have those moments or were you too, oh, nodding. Okay, I didn't know if this generation. Well, because your phones, I thought maybe, like. Well, we didn't have no, phones. I very fun. Oh, you did? Not no. when we were like, no. Not when we were like, no. Like, but you guys didn't. You're still in that generation that didn't get your phone until seventh grade or something? I never yeah. got yeah. I didn't get it until I was a freshman. Well. Okay, so seventh, eighth grade, year. freshman year or whatever. Yeah. So someone tell me, someone make me feel good about the simplicity of your childhood. Where did you go and what did you do? Skylar hit me. Try to pick other people that haven't spoken yet. Tell me about a moment. Um, every day after school, I had to park by my house. And every day me and my uh, best friend would just sit on the swings for hours and just talk. 
Yeah. About okay. like stupid stuff. Right, and your biggest worry then was what not, I'm gonna wear to school. Tomorrow. Yeah, just like just nothing, right? Sid, you got one. Yeah, my grandmother made me stop this garment, or my grandparents up north had a garment that I like absolutely love. You just dig in it all freaking day. I just just like walk in it, like look at the flowers. And I don't know how you guys manage your whole life now with your online life and everything, the press, the pressure, the group texts, and the fear of missing thing, all that stuff. We but don't. The simplicity of, we don't. I know. <laughs> the simplicity of that time. You have it too, when? Well, you had your hand up? Oh, yeah. My brother and I had imaginary friends. So for like, until we were like 10, yeah. that's just all we did was hang out just with our imaginary just friends. Just run in the backyard and hang out. I mean, I picture my kids running in our backyard catching fireflies. Yeah. I'm like, oh, those times, am I? Oh, my family, every week we would talk to the school in our backyard and we'd have a barbecue in our bed in the night and we'd get to these cool little guns and just catch fireflies. Yeah. The good old days, Ava? Uh, this kind of sounds weird, but when my brothers and I, uh, when well, my brothers were still living at my house, um, at our house, we used to, we had this long dining table and we used to do homework together. Oh. So it'd be like a little circle of studying. Just sit there and just, and even though it was homework, it was still like simple. Just we're all hanging out and coloring or doing some numbers or doing yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Um, so um, when I got home on the bus stop, there was like this tree and then there was a fence. And you could climb off the fence and then get onto the tree. Oh. So just, like every day after school, my brother and I would climb into the tree. And one day my brother like jumped out and like had an apple in his hand. He was carving sticks. Cut himself? And he, like, uh, oh. it was fun. But good times at the It was tree. fun. Uh, yeah, Matthew. Uh, we always try to, like, recreate football plays. Oh. We always just go in with oh my front of the and recreate, like, all those. The hours I spent tossing footballs with my kids and just, hey, now you're this guy. Yeah. yeah. Right? The simplicity of that. And when did, when did that go away? Like, seventh grade? Yeah. 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 Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Ah, uh, good old days. Um, all right. When we speak of when we speak of nature in this manner, we have a distinct but most poetical sense in the mind. We mean the integrity of impression made by manifold natural objects. It is this which distinguishes the oh look at this the stick of timber of the woodcutter from the tree of the poet. I've talked about that already. To the woodcutter, it's just stick of timber. To the poet, it is much, much more. When he says poet here. He really means the transcendentalist, the person who is one with nature and a deep thinker. The charming landscape, which I saw this morning, is indubitably, 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 I love that word, indubitably, I just like saying it, indubitably, made up of some 20 or 30 farms. Have you guys been, have you been on a plane? Some of you? And you've looked down and seen this? Oh, I think it's amazing. When, like like the, the, the landscape is all like this. Yeah. Like squares of, of, yeah, and like this one, you can see dark green, this one's all brown, this one, like, but you can actually see who, like you can tell, they own that, they own that, they own that, they own that, and it forms this checkerboard, oh, love that, that's what he's talking about right here. The um, 20 or 30 farms, Miller owns this field, Locke owns that field, Peyton and Eli Manning own the woodland beyond, but none of them owns the landscape. There's a property in the horizon which no man has, but he whose eye can integrate all the parts, and that is the poet. Only the transcendentalists really own the landscape, all of the land. And this is the best part of these men's farms, yet to this, their warranty deeds give no title. But the poet, the transcendentalist, the nature person that we're trying to be right now, we own like the landscape. Like when we were out sitting in the woods, we own it all, even though certain parts of it are owned by other people. Um, I appreciate you guys. I feel like you were really thinking with me. Um, homework is? Oh, your art of the month's already done, actually. But if you have to do any work on it tonight, just a little just wrap. Yeah, just go around. Not sure why I'm staring at that. It's over. I did.